Hello, this is, this is Gerard Perry, and you are watching the Books and Music <clears throat> Review Show. As you can see, the normal host has uh, taken a brief hiatus, and today we'll be talking about, um, well, I'll be talking about the upcoming mayoral election. And just to be clear, we're not endorsing any any particular candidate, although for people who are registered to vote, we encourage you to make um, to study the candidates and make make uh, your selection wisely. Uh, it you can base on some of the information we'll provide in the next half hour or so. So just to go through some of the we'll be we'll be go, we'll be discussing some of the major candidates and a few minor party candidates we'll briefly mention as well. In terms of the major party candidates, of course, most, most of you probably know Bill de Blasio. He's on the air all the time. Um, he's holding press conferences and uh, is uh, very well known because he's the mayor of the biggest city in the United States. He's a Democrat, of course. And he's been mayor for the past four years. He was elected in 2013 in a very divisive primary. Most of you probably remember that primary because Anthony Weiner, uh, the notorious Anthony Weiner, was was uh, the main focus until his campaign imploded for uh, reasons which you're. You're probably aware if you follow New York politics, but in any case, uh, Bill de Blasio has been a long time uh, political. He, he's been a politician for, for a very long time. Before he was mayor, he served in the city council representing Park Slope in Ken Kensington for about eight years. Uh, he was also the uh, public advocate. He was also the um, campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. And even before that, he worked in Nicaragua and on behalf of the, the Sandinistas, the, the Marxist rebel group, which later, which, uh, which took power and is, took power again after being voted out of office. In fact, one of, the, one of his criticisms um, during a recent debate was the free enterprise economy which he's not a fan of, at least according to him. And uh, during that debate, he was debating Sal Albanese, the city councilman from, or oh, former city councilman for 15 years from Bay Ridge. Uh, they squared off at Symphony Space. This is his, I think it's, his, yeah, it's Sal, Sal Albanese's third bid for mayor. The last time he ran, he got less than 1% of the vote. But in 1997, he garnered around 20% or so. He's usually, uh, he's kind of interesting because he's a very, he's very progressive. He doesn't fit the, the, the usual profile of, uh, uh, he doesn't fit the usual profile of, um, a progressive Democrat. He's an Italian American who represented a very conservative district, which usually, after, which usually, um, well, sometimes they vote for Republicans, but they they usually vote for conservative candidates. And he's running for mayor on a platform of uh, kind of a, a populist platform. He's uh, during the debate. He actually took some shots at de Blasio, the fact that, um, well, one, he mentioned the fact that there are 200,000 more homeless people, a uh, 20% increase in homeless children, and uh, also the fact that de Blasio is kind of connected to the, um, the real estate industry. When he ran the first time, he was supported by New York City class which ostensibly was opposed to the horse uh, carriage ban, but they also were uh, bankrolled by a, a very wealthy uh, 
real estate mogul, I believe. And Albanese took issue with, with him. Uh, he actually implied, I believe, that the, that the mayor should be indicted. And that was in reference to the eight investigations into his administration. Um, he, he has a nonprofit that raised money for his reelection, and uh, dozens of people who were donors also lobbied on behalf of, uh, lobbied his administration at the same time. And uh, de Blasio would pr probably counter that he supports public financing of campaigns, that he wants to, um, like I said, he's very, he's ostensibly, he's anti capitalist even though even though he's um, raised a lot of money from uh, real estate and uh, and and landlords he would also say that he's he, he, he pushed a re he uh, enacted a rent freeze and he's responsible for that um, but Albanese uh, criticized him repeatedly throughout the debate for uh, for uh, quote unquote pay to play, i.e., people donating money and then lobbying the city, and that was something that Nicole Maliotokis also has been a been a very very strong critic of, and she's the assemblywoman from Staten Island. She's been the assemblywoman for the past uh, probably uh, seven years, I believe. I think she was elected in 2000, 2010, and she defeated a Democratic incumbent. She's, she's very confident that she can do the same here, even though uh, the odds are stacked against her. And she's been known for a lot of, uh, a lot of local initiatives, trying to increase mass transit. She's, in, she's been involved in transit issues very, um, very successfully as probably the cornerstone uh, or was one of the cornerstones of her campaign but she's also she was also involved last year in a um, in a controversy over um, quote unquote undocumented immigrants people who were in the country illegally whether or not they should be whether or not they, they when they're when they're arrested, the police should cooperate with ICE and federal immigration authorities. And De Blasio, uh, Mayor De Blasio, said that he, he he's been pretty adamant that he he doesn't want doesn't want the city cooperating. Although he said that there were a list of offenses that could merit. Um, uh, these people being handed over to, or, or, or these, these people eventually being deported. So it, that was probably one of the, one of the, one of the um, main, main ways that people got to know uh, Nicole Malley took is her questioning of de Blasio during this hearing into the city's immigration policy, the, the policy of uh, non-compliance with with ICE for for uh, illegal immigrants who are detained, and she's also she's she's in, in terms of her biography, she was an aide to Senator Mar Mar Marchi and uh, Governor George Pataki before uh, before she before she was elected to the assembly. So she's another another person who's been very kind of, uh, I wouldn't say career politician, but that's been her main vocation. Sal Albanese was a public school teacher and also, and also involved in, with the financial services firm after he was in office. There's a couple of, um, couple of minor candidates or, or candidates that, that aren't running on, on a major party label. Uh, one of them is Bo Dito, and he's the very effusive, kind of uh, voluble, 
uh, New York City. He was a f former detective with the NYPD. And he, I think now he's more known as a kind of a radio on-air personality and a, and a talking head on Fox News that they get to discuss whenever there's a controversial political subject. And uh, he's running He's running as an independent. Because he, originally, he wanted to run as a Democrat. Then he tried to get something known as a Wilson Pakula, which is an obscure, or uh, kind of obscure to people who aren't into politics. It's, it's sort of a waiver for someone who's not a member of that party to run as the standard bearer for that party. And he ran as a, he wanted to get one of those to run as a Republican. But uh, the county chairs kind of refused to, um, refused to let him do that. And he's probably the most interesting in terms of uh, just personalities. He's one of the more interesting characters that you have, that you have in the race. But he's, he's probably more of a, of course, a law and order, kind of get tough uh, candidate. Uh, Maliutokis, Nicole, uh, Assemblyman Maliutokis also wants, recently she said that she wanted to arm retired officers to patrol city schools I don't, to prevent things like Sandy Hook, the, the massacre at Sandy Hook from occurring. And I don't know how many of you remember, but uh, Giuliani, that was another, that was a, a controversial aspect. He wanted the NYPD, um, NYPD to be uh, school safety officers. It's, and it was very controversial at the time. And that was, um, so it's interesting that she's brought that up. Uh, once again, the idea of school security. Uh, getting back to uh, the debate that was held at, at, at Symphony Space, it was really, really interesting because you had, you had um, a really progressive, you had, you, had, you had a candidate in de Blasio who was very much anti, at least ostensibly anti-capitalist, but is associated, but is, but is uh, really kind of criticized by the left for the, the, the deals he's made with, the real estate, with real estate interests. And you also had, you had him facing Sal Albanese, who's, who's kind of a, um, a really, also a really progressive, a candidate, someone who started the campaign finance system. He supported community policing and was a big ad, big supporter of David Dinkins both times that he ran for re-election. But he's also been a critic of this sort of a new wave of identity politics that has gripped the Democratic Party. While de Blasio wants to, wants to review every single statue to see whether or not whether or not it meets the standards of uh, whether it meets contemporary standards you had Albany Sal Albany say that you know the, the statue of Christopher Columbus should should remain up that it should uh, d despite the criticism of him as a precursor to colonialism in the US so you had all these different strands of uh, kind of contradi contradictory, these kind of uh, contradictory elements within the Democratic Party. You also had, uh, as I said before, you had the, the recurring issue of de, de Blasio, uh, Mayor de Blasio, whether or not he is, um, he is corrupt. And the Daily News has written a couple of, uh, published a couple of articles about this. Uh, the fact that, uh, well, one of, one, of the, one of the issues was the, um, was a building in Rivington 
uh, in Rivington that was um, that was that had a D, uh, that was used pr uh, primarily for for healthcare. I believe for for. Uh, I believe it was a nursing home for, for patients uh, with AIDS, I believe. And um, uh, this man named Jim Capolino steered $50,000 in donations to the mayor after pressing for a deed change that allows one of his uh, clients to turn a building restricted from that into, uh, fr f turn a building, <coughs> excuse me, restricted as a nursing home into a condominium. Um, and, and, and this was one of the, one of the, this was a hugely controversial issue, even though, as I said, n no one has pressed charges, the investigations have all, have all been, been dropped, but this was a huge bone of contention. I believe the Village Voice wrote, published a couple of articles, uh, exploring this issue. Um, and that was one of the main themes of the debate, the fact that uh, Al uh, Sal Albanese believed the mayor wasn't really a fit to be in office because of all of these relationships with, with, with uh, party donor, donors. And... Um, and like I said, it's... It was it was kind of interesting that that De Blasio Mayor De Blasio was criticizing um, the free enterprise system, even as he was seemingly um, benefiting from, or not not necessarily free enterprise. But people would would say this was a matter of corporatism, people buying and s buying favors from the government, but. Uh, the mayor would probably say that he wants to change that by making, by by making taxpayers pay for for campaigns. Uh, one of the f one of the funny lines was uh, f uh, when when uh, Sal Albany said, "If Bill De Blasio gets reelected, the best job will be will be travel agent." <laughs> That was kind of a dig at the mayor for all of these foreign jaunts, even though most most people are allowed to, uh, most mayors usually take the requisite tour of Italy and Ireland and Israel, or the three eyes, at least that's what it was called when, um, I, th I think that's that's what it's usually called. Uh, mayor, mayor Koch did that and all of his successors and, uh, De Blasio has kind of followed suit. He he went to Hamburg uh, after, uh, and this was also controversial because a police officer was murdered at the time that he took a trip overseas. Um, another bone of contention with De Blasio, uh, Mayor De Blasio, is that his relationship with the with the NYPD. The PBA is 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 an opponent of his, and his views on on police aren't that much different from Sal Albany's. That was the one area where they seem to agree in terms of community policing. Although uh, he's he's been criticized by Nicole Malliotokis for for not being on top of on top of uh, the mental mental health problem, the fact that we have had had mentally ill people engage in it. For example, uh, Yadira Arroyo, the EMT who was killed by a man who was, who was mentally ill. And these have been kind of high, high profile incidents. Um, so he's come in on, and he's been criticized for that. Uh, he's also been criticized in, in the tweet, in the, uh, Assemblyman Malitokis men mentioned the fact that felony assault on women is up 25%, although 
the crime rate in general has continued to decline. And uh, Albany's, uh, Sal Albany's, getting back to the debate, said that if Mickey Mouse were, that was another catchy line, if Mickey Mouse were mayor, crime would go down, which I, I guess you could debate what, how much the mayor has to do with crime, but the fact that they stopped, they discontinued stop and frisk, and crime continued to, to, to decrease for the most part, it would be used as uh, evidence that it was a good policy, the fact that, the fact that we didn't really need to be stopping and frisking so many people. And in terms of the, the, uh, the debate, the, the election going forward, there's, of course, the, uh, the primary is this coming Tuesday. So you're going to get to select, uh, select between the two Democrats and also, so apparently, Sal Albanese, I didn't realize this until I heard an, a radio ad on WABC by, by Curtis Sliwa. Sal Albanese is running as a Reform Party candidate. And evidently, if you're an independent, you can, you can vote for him on the Reform Party, uh, reform, uh, the Reform Party line. In other words, if you're not enrolled in a party, you can vote for him. As a, as a reform party, um, you can vote for him in the, in the reform party. I don't know. It's, it's very, it sounded confusing to me when I heard it, but I'm sure there are people who know, who know more about it than I do. I mean, there, there, there's also, um, there are also some minor, very, uh, very, there are also some un, very, very, uh, minor candidates, candidates that haven't received a lot of attention, like um, I think Robert, Robert Ganji, whose big issue is criminal justice reform. He wants to close Rikers immediately upon taking office and provide sanctuary, sanctuary um, status to uh, illegal, people who are in, in the country illegally. So he's also coming at the mayor from the left. That's, that's been one of the main dynamics of the past, I would say the past year or so. A lot of the criticism de Blasio is getting from New Yorkers is, is usually, it's, it's, it comes from a couple of different places. There, there are people who are ang angry at the relocation of homeless shelters or the uh, relocation of homeless shelters to their neighborhoods and places like Queens and uh, working um, kind of middle class neighbor neighborhoods. But there's also a lot of criticism of de Blasio from the left and there have even been protests against him from the left by people who are dissatisfied with his relationship to uh, lobbyists and they think that he, he favors the, the wealthy despite calling for a millionaire's tax that applies to people making over $250,000. That was what, one of his suggestions in terms of uh, fixing, the, um, fixing New York during the debate. The, uh, they mentioned the fact that he opposed congestion, congestion pricing as most of the people, a, a lot of the when he was in the city, city council and um, I think when he was mayor as well, the, the idea to charge people coming into Manhattan more. Uh, so he, he posed that because he was an outer borough city councilman, but he, he, he uh, he's also, He's also come in, in, into a lot of criticism for, for not responding to the needs of, uh, needs of the outer borough, like at outer bor borough residents, like, uh, like I said, because of the homeless, relocation of homeless shelters. 
Assemblyman, Assemblywoman Malutokis has come into some criticism for switching, for, for changing sides on some things like, for example, she changed her position on gay marriage. And a lot of people accuse that her being politically expedient, the fact that she's running for, for mayor of New York City. Um, and, you know, of course, they would try to tie her to Donald Trump just because she's a Republican, even though there was not, not really, I, I could be wrong, I don't think there was, there was much of a, she wasn't a huge Donald Trump backer. I, I, I could be, I'm not, I'm not sure if she endorsed him or not, but the only really big supporter of Donald Trump in the city, as far as I can recall, was uh, city councilman Joe Borelli in Staten Island. But to the extent that they're criticizing her, they, they, would, they would attack the fact that she's a Republican and the fact that she has switch positions, although she would, I think she, she would uh, say that probably, I don't want to speak for her, but I think she would say that the position changed as a result of different uh, circumstances. And in terms of um, how the race is going to shape up, assuming if, if de Blasio is, if de Blasio wins the primary, which is very uh, probable based on history and the fact that he has so much more name recognition alone than Salah. If he wins the primary and he faces Mali Tokis, she, she would definitely be an underdog, but it would be interesting to see what would happen in, a, in the general election, because she, she's the first woman candidate uh, or n nominee. She, she'll be the first female nominee of the Republican Party for New York City mayor since, I think, 1980, 1984, I want to say, or 80, probably 85. Uh, and she'd be the first female nominee since Ruth Messenger in 1997, who lost to Mayor Giuliani pretty handily when he ran for re-election. And the, it, it, it would be kind of fascinating to see what would, um, what will happen. I'm not, she's definitely the underdog just like Sal Albanese is, uh, is the underdog in his race against de Blasio, but it would still be, still be an interesting dynamic to see, to see them debate each other, to see them on stage to face off. Just because the last, uh, the, de Blasio was elected in a contested primary in a big upset, but yeah, one uh, but he didn't really face much of a challenge. He, he ran against uh, Joe Loda, who was the head of the MTA. So I, I mean, I would like to see a, a competitive race, at the very least, to see some interesting debates Hopefully, hopefully you learned a little bit more about the candidates from this program. Uh, if you are voting, just take into consideration uh, what their stances are. You can go visit, uh, go visit their websites, and see which, which ones, um, which candidate most uh, aligns with your views and then just make a, a wise decision what, what do what you feel is right and uh, this has been uh, books and music review uh, i'm gerard perry uh, signing off bye